not learning manual settings for your camera. I know it's not the holy grail to use manual. I most of the time use P mode or A mode and there's nothing wrong with that. But the key is to understand what those manual settings can do to your images. So what happens if you make a faster shutter speed? What happens if you adjust the aperture? And what happens if you adjust the ISO? All those things are really key information for you to understand what's going on. And using A mode or P mode, it doesn't mean that you're using everything auto. You will need to make the exposure compensation. And understanding the manual mode helps you to do that exposure compensation. So learn how manual modes or manual exposure works on your camera and understand what ISO, aperture and uh, shutter speed means and what is the relationship between the three. That's the basic knowledge of photography. Hi, it's Peter here and let's continue with the second one. Underexposing shots. Unfortunately, Quite a few of you underexpose your shots by stop or even more. That comes always up when I have my one-on-one -on -one lessons where I uh, uh, consult and teach photography to people who want to buy that. And if you're interested in having a you know, Zoom call one-on-one -on -one with me, just check out the link down below for all the information about that. But yes, people do that underexposing because they want to kind of like preserve the highlights. And yes, there is a logic to it. And if your sensor is invariant, which means that it doesn't really matter what ISO you're using, you can still uh, make your image like almost four stops brighter without losing any quality. Then of course, yes, underexposing might be a good thing to to preserve the highlights. But if you underexpose, you throw away a lot of information because most of the information sensor can capture is in the highlights. Preserving them is a key. Do not overexpose either. And to make sure of that, learn how your camera, uh, or if your camera has so-called blinkies, or maybe it has the zebras, where you can adjust uh, so that there will be warning colors if the image is going to be overexposed, which means that you will lose the highlights. And it will also show some of the cameras, especially like Olympus and OM system cameras can show the uh, dark areas too with the color of blue. So learn how those work and that will help you a lot making the correct exposure. And then the third bad habit is to go out only when it's a good weather. You know, I know especially now here in Finland when it's very, very cold and a lot of snow and windy, it's, it's really nasty weather, even though the sun is shining and everything is nice, but the weather is nasty in that sense because of the cold and maybe some snowing and all that, it's, it's a big hassle. I don't really like that. But it's a good weather to photograph because there is a lot of snow and clear weather, it, all the surroundings look different. And the same thing with when it's heavy raining, usually that might be a thing that I don't want to go out because it's raining and yeah, fine. But when it's raining, you can get really great shots. And I especially like umbrellas because they add to the image. They have different colors and all that. So it's, it's a good weather to photograph when it's raining. And especially when the rain stops, everything is wet. You get all these nice reflections on the ground and make all the colors and you, you can make really interesting images or you have big puddles where you can you can reflect the scene and maybe even turn it upside down and do something wanky with the images. And yes, and also snowstorms and all those are really great time to photograph. So go out when it's a bad weather. You will be very happy that you did. Not editing your images. I know many say that try to get it as good as possible in camera and make it ready for or inside the camera. And yeah, I agree on that. But still, many, many images and most of them need some uh, editing. Adding contrast, treating dodge and burn with highlights and shadows can really lift up an okay image to a great one. Just little things to uh, darken some parts of the image and lighten some parts of the image because we tend to see the lighter part first. Playing around with that, you can guide the viewer's eye the way you want because when you're out there, it's not always possible to get the perfect light or get the subject in the best possible light. So you need to tweak that a bit. And sometimes even 
uh, removing some distracting object from the background could be a thing to do. But of course, if you're doing street photography the classical way, don't do that because it's not kind of part of the the workflow or the ethics of street photographs and especially documentary and, and journalism is a no-no getting or, or removing anything out of the image. But do some editing for your images and especially if you're shooting raw then of course it's a must you have to do that because the raw file is just the raw data from the center and you kind of make the image in the edits and if you shoot jpeg then of course try to get the image as close as possible to the uh, one that you will be showing others but even jpegs could benefit from some tweaking and also remember if you put garbage into the editing software, you will get garbage out. So the better the image is, the better the original is, the better the end result will be. And then another thing about image editing is do not over process your images. Yes, there are a lot of nice tools and sliders and you can use them, but don't overdo it because it doesn't look good if you, if you over process or over saturate or do something strange with the image and especially with different filters in Photoshop. Well, you can try them once and then forget about them. You don't need them. The only sliders you need if you make the image as uh, good as possible in camera are the exposure, highlight, shadow and contrast sliders and maybe dehaze and start adding some texture with the texture sliders. Those are the ones that you really need. Everything else is just, you know, something that you don't need. Or maybe, yeah, one more is maybe the white balance adjustment is something that you might want to tweak to make the image a bit cooler or warmer, depending on your style. But don't overdo it. That's, that's a bad habit. And the next one is fall into the gas, gear acquisition syndrome. That's a really bad habit to buy everything new all the time. When there is new gear coming, you want that, you need that, you think you need that. And that will, uh, take you to a wrong path. You think that the image that you make is because you have a good camera, a good lens or something good. No, if the image is good, it's you that is good. And if the image is bad, it's you why the image is bad. It's not the camera. Of course, there are sometimes some gear that might be more suitable for, for certain things than other cameras. You wouldn't take a, a big Hasselblad do street photography most likely, or you wouldn't use Ricoh GR3X in a studio. Of course, there are some things that, that affect, but most of us, that we photo, what we photograph is not anything to do with the camera. We can do almost everything with any camera that we have. So the first thing is to do is to learn your gear, your existing gear and see what it can do before buying anything new. And of course, sometimes it's time to buy something new to replace something or get slightly better but remember that no gear will compensate the lack of skills in photography. And that's the motto of my channel this year. And I think it's true. And before we go to the seventh one, a reminder, there will be an extra tip after the seventh one. Like always. Chimping. Chimping is a really bad habit because if you chimp all the time, you will lose a lot of images because while you're looking at your screen, how the previous image was something's going to happen in front of you and you will lose that image because you're too concentrated on the image you already took. Of course it is a wise thing to every now and then look how the images are and especially if you're doing some client work. Yeah, that's that's what I do quite a bit. I show the images just to, you know, make the client more assured how the image are, are going and, you know, and of course it's also for me sometimes you look looking at uh, taking a street photograph, for example, and you have taken the situation and then you look at the images and you, you kind of get a good self-confidence if you have something very good in the, in the memory card already. That, that will boost up the, the creativity and the enthusiastic feeling when making those photographs. And of course, if there is some, some bad photograph, that's also is something to boost up your creativity and, and push you harder to make better images. But don't Jimp and look every image that you have in the in the memory card. Or after you take and you just start jimping, it's it's not a good habit. It's 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 bad. Extra tip: not making backups of your images, because you know that there are only two types of hard drives: 
those that are broken and then there are those that are not broken yet. And that is the key because you will have hard drive fails. If you have your images only in one hard drive, it will fail someday and you will lose everything. So always back up your images. Have two hard drives, even three if, if possible, and check them every now and then so that everything is okay. And if some uh, one is broken, then get a new one and back up to another one or the third one. And of course, cloud services is one solution that you can be using. But remember that uh, also those cloud services may go out of business or change their plan. So might be cheap now and all of a sudden they raise their prices and the space, the, the hard drive space that they have online in the cloud might get more expensive. So be aware of that. So constantly look around what type of services there are. I have been using both methods. I have uh, hard drives and backups and then I also have some images in Photo Shelter. It's a cloud-based uh, service that I have been originally using to uh, deliver my images to clients. It's a very good way so they, they can stay there for a certain amount of time and then when clients have downloaded them I might have them there for a little while and then just you know take them down if I want. I do have an unlimited plan now so that there is no you know upper limit how many photos I can upload there and that's been a very good place to upload my some you know my best images so that if if I lose something happens I have them in the cloud and I'm all set with the the best images that I've ever taken so that's a that's a good habit of doing and you know just you know send the keepers to the cloud and you're good to go but remember check out the services every now and then and see what's going on so that it doesn't all, all of a sudden disappear and you lose everything. So beware of that and also the prices. And here's a video called five reasons you most likely take bad photographs. That might be something you like to watch after this video. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.